Welcome back. COP28 continues in Dubai as world leaders continue their quest to use climate change as the weapon of mass subjugation of the peasants. Of course, they will never have to make the sacrifices they impose upon us. As the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, is poised to issue a report this month that will call on Americans to counter climate change by cutting their excessive appetite for meat. The COP28 attendees have quite the yummy meat selections on the menu. From smoked Wagyu beef burgers to melt-in-your-mouth barbecue. Oh gee, my mouth is watering. <laughs> but they're not the only ones cooking up ideas. Their mouthpieces in the media are doing their job to assist the climate hucksters through messaging. CNN Travel says it's time to limit how often we can travel abroad and that carbon passports may be the answer. After travel has finally rebounded post-COVID, which was also a great weapon of mass subjugation, I guess it's time to start introducing the planned restrictions on movements in our lives. Remember that you'll own nothing and be happy. That apparently includes a passport, too. But after their plans to crush us financially for carbon use, you won't be able to afford to travel anyway. Here's the head of the IMF calling for carbon consumption charges. We are a huge proponent of carbon price. We believe that carbon price has the potential of raising revenues uh, in a way that is both equitable because the more you consume, the more you pollute, the more you pay. Mm. And it is also an incentive to accelerate decarbonization. In other words, you would need less money. Just like the yummy beef, the only ones consuming travel will be the wealthy elites. But take heart, because once you're confined to your 15-minute city with a bike and a backpack that can hold all of your possessions, you'll be living a life of nirvana, offering thanks to the overlords for the lab-grown chicken that they allow you to purchase if your social credit scores prove your worthiness. Here to discuss is Alex Newman, CEO of Liberty Sentinel Media. Alex, thanks so much for being with us. It's great to see you. Great to see you, too. Thanks, Allison. And I, I think you just did the best description of this whole thing that I have seen so far. So thank you. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you. That's quite an honor coming from you, Alex. And thank you again also for joining us from COP28. I know it's very late over there. I have to ask, have you had any of this mouth-watering barbecue that they're offering up? <laughs> Unfortunately, our budget doesn't allow for that. I've had a couple of beef and chicken shawarmas, which were delicious. But no, the, the food that these elite, they're staying at seven star hotels over at the Burj Al Arab and the Burj Al Khalifa. Uh, so they are living a life of luxury. They're flying in here with their private jets, feasting on some of the best food imaginable, and then jetting off to the next nice destination. But us lowly people, we don't get to participate in that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that, but everyone should get used to it because that's going to be the life for us peasants moving forward right now. Alex, we've known all of this has been in the works for quite some time, but the move to actually control our movements has officially begun. What have you heard at COP28 regarding limiting travel with carbon passports? Yeah, it's a big topic of discussion, and they've been kind of mumbling about it for years now. We have to stop travel. They're saying that uh, tourism is responsible for 10 percent of all the emissions and agriculture is responsible for 30 percent of all the emissions. So basically farming, ranching, food, travel, anything you can think of that's fun or important or necessary. If you're American, if you're a European, if you're Japanese, no more, at least not with permission, without permission from your overlords. But, uh, hey, you know, the communist Chinese, they can continue to live it up because, you know, they're communist already. Exactly. That's just how it works. Wonderful news for us. Now, let's talk tax um, and consumption. Exactly how are they going to measure our carbon use in order to tax us, Alex? Well, these systems are already in place, Alice. And actually, the second ad I saw when I got off the airplane here in the United Arab Emirates was from MasterCard. And I've seen them now all over the city. They say MasterCard has your personal carbon footprint tracker. Wow. So this is already coming about. It's already happening. And once you exceed your carbon budget, you won't be able to eat certain foods. You won't be able to heat or cool your home. You certainly won't be able to travel, certainly not abroad. And so the, the control grid is being built. A lot of it was built during COVID and uh, it's getting louder and louder and louder. Uh, I know a lot of these things sound far-fetched to your average everyday American, but as John Kerry said here today, nothing, not even Donald Trump can stop this transformation. <laughs> 
unbelievable. It's it's hard to actually grasp the enormity of all of this and how real it is. I think so many people hear it and, and just try to write it off or, or not think too deeply about it. But this is our future if we don't put an end to it. You know, I'm trying to figure out now how, how long I might have to go without driving my car so I can build up enough credits for a flight uh, to Vegas, let alone Europe. I mean, this is insane. Now, reportedly, uh, UN scientists believe they should be able to make policy and oversee implementation. Uh, didn't we see how the elected political hacks called scientists destroyed lives during COVID? I mean, what could possibly go wrong here? Yeah, and, and this is the direction that they've been moving for a long time now, Allison. When David Rockefeller got together with Zbigniew Brzezinski, his minion, to create the Trilateral Commission, they dreamed up this concept called a new international economic order. Okay. And this new international economic order that they dreamed of was going to basically eliminate self-government, eliminate elected representation, eliminate, of course, our constitution, and move toward a technocratic form of government. And the very essence of technocracy is that scientists, engineers, and experts will make all the decisions for you, basically technocrats, rather than you making your own decisions or your elected representatives making decisions for you. So that is the move afoot right now as we speak. And as you just pointed out, Allison, if we don't stop it, dystopia awaits us. So we have no choice. We must put a stop to this madness. This wouldn't even be possible without American taxpayer dollars. It wouldn't be possible without U.S. government participation. But folks, if they get their way, all these things that we're talking about will stop being science fiction dystopia and will become your reality. Yep, very well said. I think the answer here is to just stop paying taxes. <laughs> I wish, right? I mean, the WHO now wants uh, countries to tax alcohol and sodas, which is really interesting. This seems quite random. Can you help me understand this one, Alex? There's so many other things uh, that are even more unhealthy than this. What do you think is, is the goal here? Well, for one, they want more money. And as we saw uh, with Kristalina Georgieva and the global carbon tax, uh, they want to start using taxation. I, I shouldn't say start using. I should say accelerate and expand the use of taxation for social engineering purposes. See, all of this is ultimately about micromanaging the lives of whatever people are considered worthy to continue on this planet. When you go to these types of conferences, what you find is one of the hottest talking points on everybody's lips is there are way too many people on this planet. We need to eliminate a huge number of the people here. And they believe that with the right taxes, with the right incentives, with the right nudging with the right population control policies, they can dictate all of this. So when they talk about using tax policy to help us make better choices, right? Uh, what they're really talking about is social engineering writ large and, of course, global governance. So we are very rapidly now watching the total elimination of individual liberty. And folks, as they said in the Declaration of Independence, when you see a long train of abuses that are all pointing in the same direction to reduce us under absolute slavery, you need to recognize that the time for talking, the time for going on social media and complaining is over, and the time for actually doing stuff like calling your elected representatives, running for office, uh, is now. Yeah, it is far past that time, I think, but better late than never, right? Get involved, get active while you still can, because every day that we're still here and able to have these conversations is a blessing. It may not be that much longer before this is just shut off completely. Now, Alex, before we're out of time today, let's talk location of COP28, a uh, climate change conference in the middle of OPEC and countries who are uber rich from oil. Now there's reports that the UAE plan to use the conference to make oil deals. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, Allison, this is so huge. BBC is a joke of a news organization. <laughs> they actually buried the lead in like the eighth paragraph where they admit that the Arabs were planning to make oil deals with the communist Chinese, with the communists in Colombia, with the communists down in Madagascar. They were going to make oil. So they're telling Americans and they're telling Europeans and Japanese, you have to shut down your economy. You have to shut down your energy grid. You have to starve your population to save the climate. Meanwhile, at the very same conference, they're saying these things. They're wheeling and dealing and making deals to expand energy. And so it just highlights the whole essence of what's going on here. It's not really about climate. It's not even really about carbon dioxide. It's about shutting down freedom, industrial civilization, transferring power from what used to be known as Christendom, the free world, over to the mass murdering dictatorships that will make possible this one world order. So I've been traveling the globe with the New American Magazine since 2009, going to these conferences. And if one thing has become crystal clear, 
is that none of these crazy policies that will destroy our economy are being applied to any of the governments that are already totalitarian. It's only us who still have a semblance of freedom that are being targeted for this stuff. And folks, we're not going to have freedom for too much longer if this continues. Well said, Alex. Very sad to see and understand the reality of this, but hopefully we can get engaged and fight back to the best of our ability before it's too late. Alex Newman, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for weighing in. We always appreciate your expertise. Thank you, Allison. Take care. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.